Ladies and gentlemen, hey, hi, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. We've seen a lot of weapon tuning happen in Warzone ever since the Pacific update took place. However, ever since we got Caldera, there's been really one gun that sort of stood the test of time so far, and obviously that is the Bren. This thing has been dominant for a very long time now, but it seems like it's going to continue to see some slight changes as we move into the future and as we see more weapon tuning because frankly put it just does not promote a diverse meta there's very few reasons to use something that's not a bren as it stands right now even though it did see some changes recently but today i wanted to take a look at what could potentially be competing with the bren right now and eventually overtake it once we see some more nerfs to it at some point in the future so as we go through it all if you enjoy the video at any point let me know by dropping a like on it would be seriously appreciated and of course if you're new here or if you have not already subscribed you already know every single day i got you covered with all things going on in cod news updates loadouts tips you're gonna find it all right here so feel free to sub with those noties turned on so in case you couldn't tell by the thumbnail or the gameplay to start the video what we are talking about is the dp27 the dinner plate the icon this weapon has been, you know, semi-decent in Warzone since the Pacific update happened, but with the Brennan play, nothing else is gonna, you know, overshadow that, right? It overshadows everything else. But it seems like with every uh, era of weapons, Cold War, Modern Warfare, now Vanguard, there's two primary LMGs that stand out, MW, PKM, and the Bruin. Cold War was the MG82 and uh, the Stoner for a little while, and I think really when it comes down to it this time around, it's gonna be the DP and it's gonna be the Bren. Now, we've got our TCK chart here. As always, shout out to Tony or True Game Data for gathering all this information. If you guys aren't subbed to him, if you guys don't check out the website, you're missing out because he offers a ton of valuable information. But we've got our main uh, setups here. We got our DP27 with the primary muzzle and barrel, the Bren with the muzzle barrel, and the Sakura mags, which is pretty much what everyone uses. The C58, which is a good comparison for range, as is the Cold War AK. Then I threw in another Vanguard weapon, the Automaton, because it's also been spiking in popularity recently. We're focused on that orange line here, the chest shots first and foremost. And you can see here, surprisingly the dp27 through 38 meters is second best only to the cold war ak then from 38 meters all the way to 61 meters it is the fastest killing weapon on this list and 38 to 61 meters is actually a decent space there where it is going to be dominating all these other top tier meta weapons which i found kind of surprising it does end up dropping off there and of course the brand here our pink line is right behind it that entire way but i was really surprised that to the chest it's actually holding its own quite well we go ahead and we look at headshots Here's where things get a little bit iffy just because the DP has a decent multiplier, but everything else does too. The Cold War AK's headshot multiplier is insane through the first 38 meters. The C58 has no drop off because of that, and uh, neither does the Bren, but the DP27 is not far behind the Bren really all throughout until you get around that 61 meter mark. If we go ahead, we look at the next shots here. It unfortunately does not have a neck multiplier. It is what it is there. Some guns do, some guns don't. Luckily, neck shots are not super, super common. They are a part of it, obviously. If you're aiming between the chest and the head, you might land a couple, but it's a small hitbox when it comes down to it. Now, if we go ahead, we look at the stomach shots here. We're leaning more towards that initial graph with the chest shots, where it's actually second best all throughout to the Cold Ray K. Then for a decent chunk there, it is actually the fastest killing uh, weapon that we have on this list. Better than the Bren, again, pretty much all throughout until you're over 60 meters away. We look at some of the extremity shots here. It is all right. You know, it, it overtakes the Bren past 43 meters up through about 61. So nothing too crazy, but it's still beating out something like the Automaton. And in my opinion, it's also a very easy gun to use. We go ahead. We look at some of the uh, arm shots here for the lower arm. It's going to be the same same deal with the upper leg pretty much the same graph and uh, for the lower leg as well but for the most part the dp27 is hanging in there and in several places to the body it is able to either best the bren or be right there with the bren which i found to be very surprising considering how dominant the bren has been for so long and how much of a sleeper weapon i would say the dp27 is as of right now and obviously something to factor in here the bren lines here that we just uh, took a look at at all places on the body as this gets nerfed, ideally they nerf the damage in the future, which is what they need to do. Add another significant drop off here or nerf the damage in general to really get it out of that top spot. This line is going to get higher and higher and that TTK will be slower and slower. And the DP27 is going to start to look better and even more competitive uh, versus some of these other guns with obviously like the Cold War AK being the main number one contender there for that top spot. So when it comes to the general loadout here, this one is an interesting one because something the DP27 has that a lot of other guns don't is more noticeable horizontal recoil. So left to right bouncing, which is not as easy to control as vertical, obviously. So we do have to build part of the setup to take that into consideration. And for that reason, in some ways, I feel like you could get away with using either Mercury or MX. 
Now, MX Silencer does about a 3% increase to horizontal control. Mercury does about a 5%, but this doesn't help out at all with vertical. So if you want to strictly focus on that horizontal bounce, I don't think Mercury is a bad choice whatsoever, but you do lose some damage range there. That's also something to take into consideration. Whereas MX is not going to help out as much with the horizontal, but it's still going to provide some. Personally, I feel like MX is the way to go, but I don't think either of these are necessarily a bad choice. Now for the barrel here, there are a couple of different options. If you look at the 680 uh, millimeter barrel here, it does specifically help with velocity, then also horizontal control. However, it does hurt your vertical control a little bit, which is a bit strange. It's a very unique barrel in that sense. The 604 millimeter barrel though, just helps out with velocity and range. And that to me is a bit more important here because you're not gonna be able to get those pros out of other attachments. You're gonna be able to get better control out of other attachments though. So I go for the 604 barrel. For the optic here, pretty much as always with any of my long range, I'm going for the three to six times. If you like the 2.5 times, you could go for that. You could go for really any optic that you're comfortable using. Uh, for the stock here, I'm actually gonna be going for the Zac S2M, my very own stock, because it is gonna help out not only with the ADS, which is cool, uh, and that's obviously gonna be very slow because this is an LMG, but more importantly, the horizontal recoil control. You're still losing movement speed like you would on a lot of these stocks that are meant for control, like for instance, the Empress VZV here also helps out with accuracy and control during sustained fire. That would be a really good choice too. I just like to focus on the control a little bit more here and make this thing a laser beam. For the under barrel, I'm gonna go with the hand stop. It does help out a bit more with horizontal than Carver would, so I'm gonna choose that there. For the magazine, I've tested out a couple of these, specifically the 30-06, because they are damage increasing and they just did not feel good. Was not a fan of those. I actually just simply prefer the 105 round pans extended mag. The reload sucks. There is no denying that. It is way worse than the Bren, regardless of what mag you're using, but it just seems like it's going to be your best bet here. 105 rounds is plenty, and you don't have to reload all that much with those. So we just try and avoid reloading as much as possible. Basically here, then you can get uh, that reload off after you're in a cooldown period once you've squad wiped a team without having to reload, right? So I go ahead, I run that. For the ammo here, of course, we're going to go for lengthened and get that better velocity on there. Also going to be going for polymer in this case to help out that recoil. For perk one, slide of hand is not a bad choice whatsoever because that awful reload, but hard scope also exists, which is gonna help out even more with that control and make it even more of a laser beam. So I personally opt for that, but if you want, I don't think slide of hand is a bad choice whatsoever. And then of course, because all the perk two perks are awful, we go for fully loaded and maximize the ammo. But this setup, I actually really, really enjoy. And as we saw with the stats, it is surprisingly competitive versus some of these other top ranged meta choices. So. Don't be sleeping on the dinner plate. It is going to be coming more and more into the meta here as the Bren continues to see some adjustments. Maybe we see the Royal Barrel nerfed more. Maybe we see some damage modifications, ideally, at some point in the future. And that starts to dwindle down to be more competitive and less meta. This sort of uh, could take its place, right? So that's going to do things for today. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully, you found it helpful. If you did, let me know by dropping a like on it. And of course, if you're new here or if you have not already subscribed, each and every single day, I got you covered with all things going on in COD. So if you want to stay up to date with everything, feel free to subscribe with your notifications turned on. But once again, thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, take it easy. Have an awesome rest of your day. And I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.